The US men's national team just ended its 2022 cycle after getting eliminated from the World Cup from the Netherlands. And now it's time to look forward to the 2026 World Cup, which we will be hosting alongside Mexico and Canada. So today, why don't we try to predict the US men's national team 2026 World Cup roster? Hi, if you're new here, I'm Felipe, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to my way too early 2026 US men's national team World Cup roster prediction. We are still three and a half years away and we don't even know who the coach will be, how the players will develop, but who cares? Let's do it for the lulls. It'll be fun to react to this video in 2026. And let me know in the comment section down below your bold predictions for the 2026 roster. And, and yeah, yeah, let's, let's just, just try, try to, to hit 1,000 likes in this video or 1,500 likes in this video. Make up the number, I don't care. Just smash it, let's play the intro and let's start these predictions because I'm looking forward to this video quite a bit. Also, because there's no pressure. I could get like 20 wrong and who gives a crap? Okay, so before we start the prediction itself, there are a few assumptions that I'm gonna have to make in this video. There's actually several assumptions I'm gonna have to make throughout this video. I'm going to assume the roster will have 26 players just like the 2022 World Cup with the following composition. So I think we're gonna go with three goalkeepers, four fullbacks, five center backs, seven midfielders, four wingers, and three center forwards, okay? This could be totally wrong, but that's the composition I'm gonna use for this video. I believe the core of the 2026 roster will be the main guys of the 2022 roster, mostly the young ones. Now with more experience and without the 2022 veterans, the leaders will essentially be Christian Pulisic, Tim Weah, Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney, Gio Reyna, Eunice Musa, Matt Turner, and many others. With that said, let's actually start the predictions with the goalkeepers. So the three goalkeepers for my prediction in the 2026 roster would be Matt Turner, currently playing for Arsenal, Gabriel Slonina, currently a player for Chelsea, and Ethan Horvath that currently plays for Luton Town. So Slonina will still be very young. We'll see how he develops the next few seasons with Chelsea, with the loans he's going to get. But I do think he will make the roster. He has the talent, and as long as he's getting minutes, I can see him being the second or third goalkeeper in that World Cup. Matt Turner will likely still be our best goalkeeper. He showed that he's reliable and hopefully by the time the World Cup comes, he's either a starter for Arsenal or he has left Arsenal and is playing regular minutes in the English Premier League. Zach Steffen, he has declined quite a bit and he's very injury prone. So I think it's only downhill from here. I still have hope that he will figure out his career and get better, but I don't think it will happen. Ethan Horvath is more of a safe bet for me to be the third goalkeeper. Sean Johnson at the time this recording is 33. He'll be 36 by then. Not too old for a goalkeeper, but I doubt he makes it. I think he mainly made this roster because of Greg Berhalter. So those are my goalkeepers for 2026. Matt Turner, Gabriel Slonina, and Ethan Horvath. So which will be the five center backs for that World Cup? So here are my predictions. Chris Richards that at the time of this recording plays for Crystal Palace. Cameron Carter Vickers that right now plays for Celtic and Scott. Scotland, Eric Palmer Brown that plays for Troa in France, John Tomkinson that at the time of this recording he's still a Norwich player. Not getting regular minutes, he's still young, but I think he can develop and pay, play a key role for us in the 2026 World Cup. And that is also one of my bold predictions. And number five, I am going to give this guy a shout out and I think he could make the 2026 roster because he's been playing very well for Birmingham City and he currently belongs to Arsenal, the former Colorado Rapids center back. Austin Trusty. Now, other shout outs I want to give that could make the roster would be Josh Winder from Lou City, Justin Che, we'll see how he develops, Brendan Craig from Philadelphia Union, Mark McKenzie that could have even made our roster. Now, the center back position takes longer to develop, so it will be tough for some of the U20 guys to develop on time for the 2026 World Cup. Now, talking about the ones in the current roster, Walker Zimmerman will be 32 by then, and you know, many of the guys that I have listed will likely have surpassed them by that World Cup. Tim Ream will be 38, so I find it very unlikely that he'll still be around during that time. Another one many are going to talk about is Miles Robinson. To me, he's a little iffy. He got an Achilles injury. We need to see how he comes back from those because those are nasty. Now, if Greg Berhalter is gone, we could possibly see a John Bur Brooks return. He will be 32 by then. So it's a big maybe. It depends on if he's playing at a good club in a high level. Right now, he's not playing much for Benfica, so it doesn't matter. And Greg is technically still the coach right now, even though they haven't renewed the contract. So John Brooks would be a very bold prediction, but yes, he could be back. 
So again, the five center backs I think will be in the 2026 roster are Chris Richards, Eric Palmer Brown, Cameron Carter Vickers, John Tompkinson, which is my very bold prediction right there, and Austin Trusty, which is also a semi bold prediction, but a little bit less because he's already establishing himself in the English second division. Now let's go to the four fullbacks that I think will make it to the 2026 World Cup. So for me, the right back position was easier to choose. Sergino Dest is young and he's our best fullback right now, our best right back. So I think he'll be there at the time of this recording. He plays for AC Milan. Joe Scali from Borussia Mönchengladbach is establishing himself as a reliable fullback in the Bundesliga. He will only get better from here. He's also very young. And then for the left back position, I have Jedi Robinson from Fulham. And the tough one is the backup. And I think it'll be Caleb Wiley that at the moment plays for Atlanta United. He showed a lot of promise, athletic ability, technical ability. I am very high on this player right now. Also at his age for Atlanta United, he looks a lot better than George Bello did when he was playing for Atlanta United at the same age. Now there are a few others that could develop and make this roster that I want to mention. One is John Tolkien from the New York Red Bulls. He's a very promising left back. Brian Reynolds that can play right back and left back as long as he gets it figured out in Europe. But I do think for this cycle, Shaq Moore, Reggie Cannon, DeAndre Yedlin will no longer be needed. George Bell and Sam Vines, we'll see how they develop. George Bell is not looking very good in the second Bundesliga. And last but not least, if he picks the United States, Jonathan Gomez could be an option. It depends if he's going to pick Mexico or the U.S. men's national team. But if he develops for Real Sociedad and he picks the U.S. men's national team, he could possibly be an option three and a half years from now. But I'm going to go with Dest, Scali, A-Rob, and Caleb Wiley. So now for the midfielders, I'm gonna have to select seven. The top four kind of picked themselves. I'll talk about their names very soon. Now the other three, I'm just kind of trying to predict it and it's almost like gambling. It, it, it can go either way, but let's go to the seven midfielders. So the top four that to me will be locks in 2026, as long as they continue to develop and they're injured are Tyler Adams from Leeds United, Eunice Musa from Valencia, Weston McKinney from Juventus and Gio Reyna from Borussia Dortmund. And I put Gio Reyna in the midfield because I think by that time, he will be mostly playing as in central midfielder or central attacking midfielder for Dortmund and the US men's national team. Now the other players I think will make the roster and these are some bold predictions. One is Taylor Booth from Utrecht. He's showing a lot of promise in the Eredivisie in Netherlands and I think he will be in the U.S. men's national team roster in 2026. The other one's Johnny Cardoso finally had a breakout season in Brazil the dual national the Brazilian American and he will be moving to Europe very soon this winter in January maybe during the summer to a top five league so I think he will develop enough to be possibly the backup of Tyler Adams at the six and an option at the eight. Last but not least I think Paxton Aronson will also be one of the midfielders he just moved to Eintracht Frankfurt as long as he develops over well the next three years he has has the talent to do so. I didn't list Brendan Aronson here because I think Brendan Aronson will be mostly utilized as a winger. That's where I think he will be the most useful. So a couple other names that I want to give shout outs that could make it depending on how the next few years go are Alejandro Alvarado and Alex Mendes from Vizela. Alvarado is much younger, but Alex Mendes has been playing very well and should get some opportunities this cycle. Adrian Simon Gill from Barcelona is still too young so we would count on him developing. We don't know. He's too young. He's just turned 16. He'll be 19 by then. It's possible, but I don't find it very likely. Now, the main concern here out of these seven that I listed are the central defensive midfielders, the six. Johnny can play there, but it's not ideal to have him as the backup to Adams. Johnny's good at reading the game, interceptions, but he's usually much more effective high up the field and sometimes even wide. Maybe Aiden Morris can develop the next few seasons and he can be an option, a strong candidate, but I don't know. Kellen Acosta will be 30 around 2026, which is technically his prime still, but I don't think he'll be around the U.S. men's national team anymore with the players we are developing. So that's it for the midfielders. And if you made it this far in this video, please smash the like button. That's how YouTube sends this video to more people and we get more people to join the channel if they want to, if they like me. Some people don't. So now let's go to the wingers and I think we're going to bring four of them to the 2026 World Cup. To me, three are locks. I didn't mention Brendan Aronson in the midfielders, so I must mention him on the winger section. So these are my wingers. Pulisic from Chelsea at the time of this recording, Tim Weah from Lille, Brendan Aronson from Leeds United, and the fourth winger option, I think it's going to be 
Kevin Paredes from Wolfsburg, the U20 talent from the US men's national team that has been progressing very well in Germany, has the talent, the technical ability, and when he played in the Bundesliga, he looked fairly good. Now, there are other players that could join in this party. One of them is Alejandro Zendejas, the dual national that plays for Club America in Mexico. He looks like he'll pick the United States. Caden Clark, even though he's been struggling, is a youngster that can pop out. And I don't know, there are dual nationals also like Alex Maiten, right? We could see how he develops too. Conrad de la Fuente is someone that I have not given up yet. I want to see how he does the next two years. But the last two seasons for him have been extremely disappointing. One at Olympique Marseille, the other one in Olympiacos, but I still have faith right there. Richie Ledesma from PSV is another option that can play in the midfield or the wing. But I can't mention every name in this video. I'm just going to go with Pulisic, Weya, Brendan Aronson, and Kevin Paredes. Now, if by 2026, we're still selecting players like Paul Riola, Jordan Morris, that means US soccer has failed to develop wingers. We really should not be bringing them anymore this cycle, in my personal opinion. Bring the core, Pulisic, Weya, Aronson, and try to get young guys to join in that you think will be ready for 2026. Build a culture with those players. We don't need Ariola, Morris, Roldan anymore for this cycle. So now the center forwards, and I think we're going to bring three center forwards to the 2026 World Cup. Who are they? So I think one of them will be Ricardo Pepe that at the time of this recording plays for Groningen in the Redivisie and belongs to Augsburg. Where he will be playing by 2026? Who knows? Now, Josh Sargent from Norwich, I also think will make the 2026 roster. He proved that he's useful in the 2022 World Cup. He's still young. He will develop and hopefully he's playing in the top five league when time comes. The next one that I think is Fulton Balogun that plays for Hans or Rons in Ligue 1 and belongs to Arsenal. There are strong rumors that Balogun is ready to commit to the U.S. men's national team come 2023. Now, other players that could make it there, one would be Jordan Pifok. It's possible as long as he continues to prove that he's a consistent Bundesliga striker, which he hasn't proven so far. I can see him being on the mix to make the roster. Daryl DK, I don't think so. I think the technical ability is not there, along with the fact that he's constantly injured. Jesus Ferreira, well, unless he goes abroad and challenges himself to become a better player, I don't see it happening. We saw it in the 2022 World Cup. We've seen it every time the level goes up. Jesus is just not good enough. We saw that in MLS playoffs. We saw in World Cup qualifying. He needs a different challenge. If he stays in MLS in his comfort zone, I just don't see him making the roster. Haji Wright, I also don't think he will make it. He often reminds me of Jassi Zardes, even the goal he scored against the Netherlands. Matthew Hoppe has been a big disappointment the past few seasons. I don't think he will make it. I would not count on it, but he can shut my mouth. He has the talent, but he hasn't shown it so far in Mallorca or Middlesbrough. Now, the U20s lack the proper nine, so I don't see any player from the U20s making it to that roster at this time. Quinn Sullivan, to me, looked like a poacher, but I don't think he would make this roster in 2026. Ricardo Pepe would be our center forward for the U20s. So my center forwards are Ricardo Pepe, Fullerton Balogun, and Josh Sargent. Let me know yours also in the comment section down below. What are your bold predictions for the 2026 World Cup? All right, everyone, thank you very much for stopping by, watching the video. I know it's too early to make this video. I know it sounds a bit silly, but it'll be lots of fun when in 2026, we react to what were my predictions almost four years earlier, three and a half years. Don't forget to drop that like before you go so we can hit over a thousand likes, share this video and comment down below your bold predictions for the 2026 World Cup, 2026 US Men's National Team World Cup roster. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.